Hey, sorry for the delay. Had to. All right. Set out the meeting, everything. So, we'll get rid of that. How are you doing? I'm good at home today, so. I see. It'll be the lazy off, so. It's all right. You got me into a wrong conversation. Delayed my time to get my hair nice. So. Oh, you don't have to worry about that. So. Look at that. It's messy. So. I can't even tell. I got my hair cut, Alyssa. That's good. Well, um, yeah, you are in the recording. Just remember that. <clears throat> you know, oh, Noah, uh, we might start um, uh, in, uh, I don't know in the future what the what the plan looks, okay? So if I stand uh, here, <coughs> basically I want another scripture reading section with you on that book, you know? So okay. Spend some time you know narrow down to other session to 45 minutes that give us a half hour am right so, to do so you want a total of uh three scripture time sessions in one week only two so t for that oh. book reading is only two so yeah well we at least last saturday we seem to have put in a section for that uh, in the morning so oh, that would the be morning? the second one. Oh, that's right. Let's do that. Remember? We don't need to worry about this. Then. I'm so sorry. Okay. I forgot yeah, about it. You. So. Okay, that's your arrangement. I totally forgot that. So. All right. Anyway, that is a long book. I want to make some headway with you. Sure. Uh, so only half hour a week. That book will never finish. Making sense to you in that? So. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so let's uh, let's move on with our um program today i'm gonna share my screen with you okay so all right yeah what is going on here okay um what do you want to do first today do a counting or do coding yeah just uh, continue with the normal uh flow of things so Let's i guess accounting count first okay so yeah okay sorry so far are you okay with the uh, so we would go about things. Yeah, I think so. Okay. <laughs> Pretty fast paced, but <laughs> I'll do my yeah. best. It, fast pace is good, actually. So to me, yeah. so, I like a fast pace learning. So you know, in 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 between time, you have a question, just ask. Also, you know, in your private time, you can catch up on certain things as well. Make it sense to you? All so, right. Yeah. So, um, let me see where we were. I need to. See. I'm gonna get rid of this thing. Okay, hold on. Hide, hide controlling. There we go. Oh, me? Okay, it's not me. Okay, you can hide it. Okay, here we go. So last time we do a brief review, go back to the outline. Uh, you can see <clears throat> the first one. It defines, explain accounting principles, concept. And conceptual difference between the two method, am I? That is cash and accrual. So we, we which we did, am I? We also did a second one, a little bit about the debt or credit based on the uh, equation, am I? So basically, the counting principle is based on this equation. Uh, make it sense to you? This is three, am I? So concerning the balance sheet, and this two is. Um, concerning the profit and loss reports. Okay, so yes. now we already did this one, right? We explained that one, make it sense to you? So, mm -hmm. so now I'm not sure we are still in four or not, but let's look at continue, okay? So now there are different, uh, what do you want to do, go back is try to recover different new terms or definition, you don't have to remember everything, but at least uh, uh, understand what the balance sheet is, am I? What income statement, making sense to you, you know, so yeah. accounting equation, what those are, so. Okay, we were in which section last time? I think we're here, um, my double entry, a curious accounting. Yeah, right? I think so. Okay, <clears throat> we already did that one, right? So, okay, let's move on then. Um, I think uh, we already did this, am right? This, this is not really a problem. So let's move on with the next one, okay? So 
Is that making sense to you? Uh, okay, you can read it. So go ahead. Yeah, just a heads up too. My it seems like the internet's a little bit choppy. So if I if I come across as choppy, then uh, oh, sorry in advance. That's <laughs> okay. Now use your own book, am I? You have as a PDF, am I? Yeah, so, yeah, I am using it. Good. It's on page right. eight. Eight, eight. Page eight. Yeah. Cool. Mm. All right. I'll start from the big beginning of page eight here. <clears throat> yeah. The analysis of accounting transactions, the recording, posting, adjusting, and reporting economic results and financial condition of a business entity is the heart of double entry accrual accounting. For an accounting transaction to exist, at least one element of the balance sheet equation or the income statement elements must be created or changed. An exchange between a business entity where services are rendered or goods are sold to an external entity for cash or on credit, or where services are received or goods are purchased, creates a transaction. Following the transaction, adjusting entries must be made to adjust the operating accounts of the business entity at the end of an operating period to recognize eternal accruals and deferrals. Such transactions will recognize sales revenues earned but not yet received or recorded and expenses incurred but not yet paid or recorded. To complete the accounting period, a requirement also exists to close the temporary income statement operating accounts, sales revenue and expenses to bring them to a zero balance and transfer net income or net loss to the capital accounts or the retained earnings account. <coughs> Note that this requirement means that an entry is made on both sides of the equation, thus the name double entry accounting. Adjusting and closing entries will be discussed in detail later in this chapter. Since no transaction can affect only one account, the balance sheet equation is kept in balance and the equality between both sides of the equation, A equals L plus OE is maintained. Each transaction directs the change to be made to each account involved in the transaction. Each directed change will cause an increase or decrease in a stated dollar amount to a specific account. It is important to understand how a journal entry directs such changes to a specific account. This is accomplished through the use of two account columns to receive numerical values that follow the rules of debit and credit entries. Mm. Is that making sense to you? To so basically Somewhat. describe to you <clears throat> the journaling process first transaction happened am i real business activity occurred make sense to you so mm -hmm. and so when it occurred you need registered it register in a sense either as debit or credit okay in a debit means you 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 own somebody okay make sense to you you yeah you, but in this light debit means actually you some somebody owns you almost you know so because you already paid am i right? you know that's my point mm -hmm. you know so credit is actually means uh supposed to be you own somebody in normal transaction making sense to you yeah on uh, but in the uh in the i might be totally wrong okay so because i'm a little bit messed it up here so okay so right. so Basically, a debit entry in company, uh, a credit entry. Okay, is for example, that can happen on either side of the balance sheet. Make it sense to you that it is A assets equals L plus O E. Let's see, A is the left side, the other side is the the right side. Make it sense L plus O E. That is liability plus ownership equity making sense to you yeah. so last time we we're talking about transaction that happened uh, on either side am right you know uh, but it also can cross the sides making sense to you you know so uh, for example you buy a car it will not go on the right side that the journal entry making sense to you it will be between cash and um, a, a fixed assets making sense to you if you paid off one time but if you put the car on credit, you know, purchase, that will show, show the liability, man. Either way, the registration is going to happen because the double entry to make either on the one side is a, is a plus or a minus, am I right? That is debit or credit or the debit or credit going to happen as a increase uh, or in this case, decrease maybe. You understand my point? You know, so... Mm -hmm. 
in, for example, I have a increase of fixed sets. Okay, you know, minus, <coughs> sorry, the payment, pay the car, minus the front payment, that is an increase in my fixed assets value, am I, which I acquired when I had a car. Am I making sense to you? But I didn't pay the other folks, the, the, the seller, the remaining uh, balance. Making sense to you? For that so purpose. if mm -hmm. I might ask a question, was the uh, <clears throat> example you were giving on Wednesday when you were purchasing a car and kind of moving uh, moving parts of the equation around, was that, was exactly. that example you were giving an example I, of double entry accrual accounting? Exactly. I'm trying to tell you is in the in the past examples of, of the contest was for explaining cash based method, am I? Cash based mm -hmm. method at the accrual method. Making sense to you, but um, after you did a crow method, say like we're gonna use a crow method to do our accounting, you should you move on to do journal entry, to do the recording. Am I making sense mm -hmm. to you? So, in the sense that uh, it's more than uh, uh, the the context change, the emphasis change, how you carry this out, and making sense to you. You know how I register these things. So after the transaction, the, those things happened. We need to do entry now. Make it sense to you, you know. So, mm. and uh, you in this case, let's see, it's purchase on credit. You have a, a first part of transaction will be real cash. You pay the the guy cash, am I? Will be on your cash account or bank account, which is in a sales account as a sub account. Okay, I add them on the assets in the balance sheets. Will be, you know, this uh, this didn't start. Uh, very well so let me uh, give me a little li little time is that okay for you so okay yeah, please go ahead. using using real life uh example so let's see um quick book a lot here we go um Bear with me, okay? It would only yeah. controlled by test book in particular, so. I had to get, get my phone on this, I believe. Okay. Huh? Okay. Hmm. Can you believe that? Look at that, the reverse. <laughs> Today I heard is your 17th birthday of your grandpa, so. Yeah, we were FaceTiming him this morning. <laughs> oh yeah, okay, he's doing okay? He seems to be doing a lot better, yeah. Okay. Hey, what's happening? Why am I not logging in? Oh, I did that. Okay. I think we did. No worries. Uh, we're going to just look at the new street studio accounting, okay? So, sure. uh, they call the chart account. If you go to this place, you can see chart accounts, okay? Chart accounts basically the detailed item. Okay, detail item for balance sheet, making sense to you? So now, is this might be not a good thing. To, you have to set up in the beginning a balance sheet, okay? So making sense to you? So now let's look at this balance sheet, okay? So this is not really any accurate to anything. I just want to give you the items, okay? All those uh, uh, chart accounts going to be uh, as a subsets or item Categorize on the media account. So make it sense to you on the bag account. You have cash in hand. You have different uh -huh. accounts, am I right? So bag accounts. You you know this before, am I a little bit, am I right? So you have account receivables. That is somebody own you money. Okay. You have account payables on the other side. That is somebody 
you own somebody money. Making sense to you? So okay, so don't worry about that. So the other is maybe fixed assets or other things. Basically, this is going to be total assets to give you a number of that. Making sense to you? Okay, so is that making sense to you on this? Mm -hmm. Okay, if somebody, for example, you did the investment, as I, uh, a million dollar, it's going to be assets million dollar for you, am I right? Because that's your money, you know? So, but if somebody invests in, in you a million dollars, that's going to transact either in owner equity or a loan to you, making sense to you, or some kind of credit to you. So it's a liability, you have to pay people back, making sense to you. So on either side, however, they're going to be um, this is transaction. So you, when you do journal entry, after um, responsibility on the transaction happened, either transition in real tra cash flow, that is a, a transaction of real money, or of um, a, a credit or liability, am I? That kind of things. Then you need to register that kind of things through, uh, based on the curial system. Okay, my English might be broken. Do you understand my point in this? Okay, so narrow down to buy a, a car in credit. You have paid two thousand dollar. Let's see, uh, in cash. Am I give them a check? That is in cash. Cash in this case, including real money through so transaction. Uh, from the bags, am I right? So bank accounts, okay? This name of cash. So um, that is going to register the deduction on your bank account, which is a deduction of cash. Cash is a is a general category, then different accounts. Bank account is a subcategory, am I right? A different account. Make it sense to you under cash. So cash is a, is a, a category under assets. So the total assets are going to be included cash plus other items, am I right? In the chart account, you set those up, those reports are going to automatically generate you through a software like this one. Making sense to you? Okay, so so in mm -hmm. back to the example, so you paid the front payment $2,000, that is deduction on your bank account, in turn, cash, $2,000. On the other side, what have you? You have a part of the increase, am I right? increase part of you uh you have a fixed assets increase am i right? making sense to you you know so but fixed assets is more than two thousand dollars you purchase a car twenty thousand dollars so you only guy eighteen thousand dollars making sense to you eighteen thousand dollars so that become a liability somehow you're going to say hey i own this guy as a loan on credit a liability am i right? making sense to you eighteen thousand dollars make it sense to you every month you paid you're going to register that payment as a deduction cash and then deduction of a liability make it sense to you but your fixed assets not be untouched because what the fixed assets in the beginning is already uh, calculated and uh, properly registered make it sense to you in this light yeah okay good I think you're a smart guy. The only confusion is my English, I believe. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now that being done, basically that's the way he uses more academic words, uh, try to describe the process, am I? So those purchase of the car called the transaction, then you recognize that transaction need to be do journal entry, you found the proper uh, chart account, items in the chart account to enter the proper transaction. Making sense to you? Um, that transaction going to happen uh, and uh, based on the equation. Now, when you do a transaction called the journal entry, let's see the journal entry, okay? A particular journal entry, okay? So, am I making sense to you in this slide? Okay. Yeah. Is there a journal entry somewhere for me? Here we go. A journal entry, okay? So, you do a journal entry, you're going to do something and you're going to find this account. This is a list of uh, all the chart accounts, okay? Either in the assets or in a liability or owner equity, am I? Whatever account you found it, you're going to, you're going to register that in the transaction. In this case, let's say you do cash, am I? Right? So let's say paid by a, a bag, okay? Let's see this is cash, okay? We, we paid the cash by hand, okay? This is for, for fun, okay? So you have a debit, am I right? You paid what? 
you pay this guy, am I making sense to you? Yeah. That is a deduction of your cash. Make it sense to you? You two thousand dollars used to have cash, ten thousand dollars. You left with eighty thousand dollars. So it's a deduction, am I making sense to you? For this account, it's a a deduction. Make it sense to you? It's not an increase. Mm. So you register here two thousand dollar. Okay. Now the fixed sets part of it fixed sets. Let's just see, fixed sets. Okay. Wow. Oh, there's no fixed sets. Okay. Let's see this. Uh, whatever you know. Um, uh, they don't have fixed sets. Sorry. <laughs> A beautiful food. Okay. Traveling. Okay. Beautiful food. Making sense here. You know. So I paid it uh, because this is not this is expense. But it's still that expense have an increase, am I? An increase in its own account, am I? Making sense mm -hmm. to you? That is a debit of two thousand dollars. That means I spend it. Now suppose you're not doing purchase of food, you purchase the computer software. Making sense to you? That is going to be a common part of your set assets. Making sense to you? Or maybe expenses as well. Actually, let's see. Is there something? A fixed assets. We don't have it yet. Okay, so sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay, assets. Let's see. Oh, okay, you went her assets. Who knows? Whatever. Making sense here. You know that included. You know, like a like whatever inventory. Am I? You buy buy whatever. You know, this is my point. I listed assets. So about the two thousand dollars, such as things, and that thing going to be my assets. Am I? That's a con that have an increase. Therefore, called the debits. They don't use the word debit. It means increase. Credit means decrease. Okay, making sense here. So, yeah. okay. Now we don't want to save this. Uh, you only want to say yes. Okay, I need to quit this so I don't change it by mistake. Okay, so <laughs> making sense here. Now you understand those are uh, journal entry, am right? You found the receipts or the agreement or the contract. For purchase the car, am I? In the transaction, you do cash yeah. in the fund. Hey, where's the check number goes? Am I? What amount of check? Who signed it? Those kind of detail. Of your firm, the as a, as a bookkeeper, your firm that uh, transaction was genuine, am I? Mm -hmm. Saying you said okay, I can do entry now. So you do the decrease of cash or decrease of bank account. As, and then increase of the other account, am right? But when you purchase a car on credit, there is agreement without real cash cash flow, am right? Making sense to you, but agreement, obligations on either side. Making sense to you is a contract. Mm -hmm. So you make sure that contracts are right and uh, with a proper signature, with a proper authorization. And then you said, okay, this seems great. So let's let me register it. Okay, I already paid cash. I need a twenty thousand dollar as increase the car on their fixed sets and register the car's name. And then okay, I own wilders, you know, another eighteen thousand uh, dollars minus the in awesome plus the twenty thousand dollars. So it's a increase for the fixed sets is balanced out. Am I right? making sense to you? You know, so okay. That's basically what it is. Okay, so as a detail out, we can talk more in the days to come. Fix the set, depreciate monthly payment to credit to your creditor to be registered. That's become subsequent transactions. Making sense? Making sense to you? So all journal entries. Okay, so mm -hmm. let's move on. So called the generally accepted accounting principles. Let's first read. The subtitles, okay? So we understand the chapter where it goes. Business entity principle, monetary unit principle, going concern principle, cost principle, period principle, conservation, conservative, conservative principle, consistent principle, <laughs> materiality concept, full disclosure principle, Objective principle, matching principle. You got it all? <laughs> a lot of principles. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is a use word. A principle basically a requirement, am I? Or something sure. you build upon with what your operation about. So, <clears throat> but let's look at it the first definition. 
called the G A A P. Okay, remember yeah. those words. Why? Because others, as a, a profession of counting, they're, they're going to use this, am I? Rather than write the whole thing. So you might right. remember that thing. Go ahead, read it. Accounting is not a static system. It is a dynamic process that incorporates generally accepted accounting principles, GAAP, that evolve to suit the needs of financial statement readers, such as business managers, equity owners, creditors, and governmental agencies with meaningful, dependable information. Now, those are terms. It's not just give you a good term, like descriptive term, right? Yeah. Those are real parties. I have concerns and interactions with the business, am I? Make it sense to you? Right. So, so thinking about it, you are a business owner, you're going to deal with different parties, am I? Yourself, you know, uh, with the assistant the accounting, am I? Make it sense to you? Right. So, you have, you, if you're a manager, how you deal with those transactions? All those those statements, am I? Make it sense to you? So book it. Yeah. Uh, if you're an equity owner, I mean, you're not a manager, you're just an owner, am I? Make it sense to you? How you deal yeah. with it? So bank manager, evidently, is more ongoing, even daily base, am I? Need to know the number flow, at least mm. monthly, am I? Making sense to you, you know? So yeah. as the equity owner, you don't really allow to engage actually normally, unless a crisis happen, am I? So mm -hmm. it will be yearly, give you a report, like in, like a stock owner, making sense to you, you know? Yeah. So, if creditors, now that relate to the particular transaction, Amen. Hallelujah. Particular yeah. interest, am I? Like a bank said, hey, or insurance company, whatever. And that's my point, you know, so who knows what is happening there. But you, the, the, they're interested in that particular transaction or particular operation. Make it sense to you? Therefore, their, their interest may be related to yearly reports, but sometimes that particular transaction or operation got in problems or need major decisions. So going to be there, look at the numbers, am I? To yeah. decide things with you. Government agency can anytime, they need a yearly regular reports for taxation or, uh, and the registration pro uh, purposes. But sometimes they also audit to you, making sense to you. If you have something to find uh, criminal activities, they're going to look at, the, at your business as well. Making sense to you, you know, so that's mm -hmm. my point. investigation, whatever. So uh, either way, all those, um, going to base on the decision and decide their interaction, major interactions based on the financial figure yielded by your accounting process. Making sense to you? You know, so, mm -hmm. so anyway, let's move on. The general principles and concepts discussed in this text will include business entity, monetary unit, going concern, cost, time period, conservatism, Consistency, materiality, full disclosure, objectivity, and matching principle. How many? In addition, let's count how let's many. See. Business entity first. Monetary yeah. unit second. Eleven, I think. Eleven. Thank okay. you. One, two. Anyway, business entity. You understand? Business entity. What means? It is sole ownership on a corporation. You understand my right. point? You know. So monetary unit. I use in using uh, ru ruby, I don't know what's the exact, uh, making sense to you? you know, yeah. So use a pound or dollar, you understand? A franc or something like that, you know, different right. currencies. Going concerns, that is, I don't exactly know about that, as you mentioned, you, you, for example, you have period, am I? Are you, I mean, sorry, uh, well, we'll look at that. Others, I don't really know, okay? Let's look at it, okay? Cool. Um, so. In addition, the gain or loss recognition on the disposal of depreciable assets will be discussed. Mm. Business entity principle. From an accounting, if not from a legal point of view, the transactions of a business entity operating as a proprietorship, partnership, or corporation are considered to be separate and distinct from all personal transactions of its own of its owners. Mm. The Let's separation of the three entities, okay? Uh, proprietorship. What does that mean? It means that some person is a solo owner of business. Make it sense to you? You know, partnership uh, means he partnered with somebody, am I? Make it sense to you? It's LSC. Right. You know, so as a corporation, that means 
Well, there's a lot of owners, am I right? Even the public owner. Making sense to you? Like through stockholding, you know? Making sense to you, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. Well, they don't have to sometimes, but it's a corporation, am I right? It's not a personal owned business, basically. Multiple owners, am I right? Multiple, yeah. uh, um, you know, um, responsibility in terms of uh, reporting concern. Making sense to you? You know? So, yeah. 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 For example, uh, uh, a uh, a uh, uh, single owner, he just use a cash flow. He don't worry about the numbers. Am I right? In the back head, he knows what's going on. He don't even know the account need the accounting. Am I right? You know, says so my can run the business. But yeah. can you do that for partners? In the end, you need to divide the profit. Am I right? share responsibility? You got to have some transaction to verify that. Make it sense to you? You know, says so my yeah. point. You know, so with a corporation, people don't even involved in the details of the operation, am I right? They surely need more information to assure that the investment are accounted for. Making sense to you? You know, so right. they need the data. So the different uh, um, entities require different accounting oversight or responsibility there. So go ahead, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. hmm. The separation of personal transactions of the owners from the business entity must be maintained even if the owners work in or for the business entity. Only the effects to assets, liabilities, ownership equity, and other transactions of the business entity are entered into the organization's accounting records. The ownership's personal assets, debts, and expenses are not part of the business entity. So you have two entities here, right? Or two natures of financial involvement here, right? Personal mm -hmm. stuff, you buy groceries for your own household, is that to do with uh, the cafe you're operating? You know, a different food purchase, am I right? You can't mm -hmm. mingle together unless you treat the cafe uh, with no, no really uh, financial oversight, am I right? Financial clarity, making sense to you? You can do that for sure if you're a person who owns the cafe. But if a partnership or others, people need to know your own food is not Consider it as uh, part of the cost for the cafe, am I right? You know, that's my point. Things need to be mm. separated. Even you purchase the same um, trip to do a grocery shopping, you need to come back to separate, oh, this is belong to John, this belongs to Nova, that's for the own stuff, and this part is spent on food purchase for the cafe. Make it sense to you? That's what I hear talking about. So mm. behind it is this a mindset, well, cafe is a separate entity. Uh, then uh, outside the owner, am I? Or the participants is a business operations, am I? Making sense to you, you know, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like another person own the people money, you know? Yeah, not own money, but the, their money, it belongs to the own. You don't need their own management, you know? So you can't yeah. really go together, so go ahead. Next one. Monetary unit principle. The assumption of the monetary unit principle is that the primary national monetary unit is used for recording numerical values of business exchanges and operating transactions. Well, let's move on. We don't need to worry about that. Am I right? You okay. know what I mean. So go ahead. Mm -hmm. Going concern principle. Under normal circumstances, the going concern principle makes the assumption that a business entity will remain in operation indefinitely. Oh, remember this one. Yeah. The business cannot say, hey, in the middle of the month, it's going to shut down, you know, cut back right, yeah. am I? You know, so most of the transactions, okay, like a fixed set depreciation, you still imagine, hey, down to 10 years, still exist, you know? Uh, that's why depreciation using a 10 year period, even uh, in reality, maybe two years later, the business is run down, am I right? Nobody offered anymore. Make it sense yeah. to you, but your depreciation going to, uh, presume that it's going to operate at least 10 years. So that's what mm -hmm. it is. Let's move on. Okay, this is a simple principle. So, so you don't need to worry about too much. Make it sense to you, you know, so, yeah. Okay, okay. next one. Mm -hmm. Cost principle. The assumption made by the monetary concept is tied directly to the cost principle, which requires the value of business transactions be recorded at the actual or equivalent cash cost. During extended periods of inflation or deflation, comparing income statements for different years becomes difficult, if not meaningless, under the stable dollar assumption. 
Well, that's a good one, right? That's a very good one. Today's hundred dollar different story. Uh, twenty years ago, am I two hundred years ago? Make it sense to you? But we use yeah. the same monetary unit to do accounting, am I? And that's my right. point. But it represents a total different volume, a different uh, importance of business transaction. Make it sense to you? Mm -hmm. you know, so go ahead. However, some exceptions are made with the valuation of inventories for resale and also to express certain balance sheet and income statement items in terms of current rather than historic dollars. Mm. Let me give you a real life story. Okay, I used to do sure. commission, my current commission. Now current commission is uh, doing a lot of uh, partner with um, a Japanese company, am I? An agency, making sense to you? You know, so we go through monthly transaction sometimes goes through $15 million in, in big number, am I? So just think about that, okay? Yes. So, and you, when you do finalization, we had to decide, that, okay, what kind of a transaction rate between Chinese, at that time it's Chinese, I mean B, or dollar, am I? We actually chose to use a dollar. Even dollar between Japanese yen and uh, the continued fluctuation, making sense to you? You know, that's my point, you know, the transaction rate yeah. continues fluctuation. So how you decide that, for example, um, let's see uh, in the beginning, a dollar equivalent to hundreds of yen, right? Japanese yen. I mean, the period after the period we do the real cash, when I did a, the real operation, that's where, where liability or responsibility occurred, that is hundred dollar, a hundred yen, a dollar. But when he give when he collected everything because he had to collect his money, am right? In order to yeah. give me commission, whatever or settlement. Now that's two months later. Imagine making sense to you. Suddenly the market fluctuated. It's a uh, one dollar equivalent to one hundred twenty yen, am right? Yeah. Making sense to you. You know if we don't decide in the beginning uh, that. Uh, um, so, sorry, I decided which dollar to use, am I? Which currency to use? Uh, we, we're gonna uh, we're gonna have a big problem, am I? Make it sense to you? Right. you know, so, so one of the things I went in to found this a problem. We continue to lose money, but the Japanese were smart, sneaky, am I? You know, says my <laughs> point. <laughs> the cheat on you, you know. So, yeah. So I had to in the contract I said let's decide it on the front what the contract what a kind of currency going to use and right we decide on dollar make it sense to you right. you know so and they have to you know they, rather than they choose to pay me dollar or pay me yeah and right so you know says my yeah. boy, you know take advantage of us so they did that for many years until i found the problem and did a did a, did a, did a, you know re reward the thing make it sense to you reward got sure. of them that saves us a lot of money make it sense to you you would think those things not important that were important, you know, so that, yeah, just give you a real uh, story on that. And you understand it's my point, you know, so yeah. by doing those things, even I'm just a content, doing the same as paperwork, I learned the, or say the company a lot of money, and right, there are other things involved. You understand it's my point, you know, so yeah. Um, so you do, you know, accounting or financial management is not a passive thing. And that's my point. It can go in, it keep you to make a major decision in life. Because I was able to do that, people will say, ah, oh, this guy is not a paper data worker, am I? Just process data, process paper, am I? You know, says my, like a clerk do. He actually right. understand the real business through those things. Make it sense to you? He acquires the real essence of the business realm. What have you? You then you 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 become a, understood as a manager of material. Make it sense to you? You know, that's my point. You know, so anyway, go ahead. Hmm. I need you to think of that mindset. So when you process paper, process data, reading those paper, uh -huh. reading those data. You don't just, oh, I just need a transaction. I make sure it's right. You know, that's a basic level. Make it sense to you, you understand what happened behind in real operation. Make it sense to you, you know, so. Yeah. Go ahead. Next one is the 
time period principle. Mm. <clears throat> the time period principle requires a business entity to complete an analysis to report financial condition and profitability of its business operation over a specific operating time period. An ongoing business operates continuously. Electrical power in reality flows continuously to the user, yet in theory, the flow stops when the service meter data is recorded. The billing statement records that service for the time period technically ended at a certain date, although service continued without interruption. This example relates to a monthly period. However, the theory applies to any time period, daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, or annually. An accounting year or fiscal year is an account period for one year of one year. Mm. A fiscal year is for any 12 consecutive months and may or may not coincide with a calendar year that begins on January 1st and ends on December 31st of the same year. Mm. In the hospitality business, statements are frequently prepared on a monthly and in some cases a weekly basis. Mm. Do you understand this, am I? So, yeah. yeah, that's pretty simple. Mm -hmm. Okay. Conservatism principle. A business should never prepare financial statements that will cause balance sheet items such as assets to be overstated or liabilities to be understated, sales revenue, sales revenues to be overstated or expenses to be understated. Situations might exist where estimates are necessary to determine the inventory values or to decide an appropriate depreciation rate. Mm. The inventory valuation should be lower than higher. Mm. Conservatism in this situation increases the cost of sales and decreases the gross margin, also called the gross profit. Mm. The costs of long-lived assets other than land are systematically recovered through depreciation expense mm. and should be higher rather than lower. Mm. Conservatism in this case will increase expenses and lower reported operating income. Its goal is to avoid overstating income. However, caution must be be exercised to ensure that conservatism is not taken to the extreme, creating misleading results. Mm. For example, restaurant equipment with an estimated five-year life could be fully depreciated in its first year of use. Although this procedure is certainly conservative, it is hardly realistic. <laughs> is that making sense to you? you know, a coffee machine so. purchased can use it for three years, am I? But a coffee machine, nobody thank you too much about it. You said, hey, let's Break the penny down, you know, a coffee machine has a dollar, am I? Rather you can't say, hey, one time this month, we're going to calculate that expense. Make it sense to you? Mm -hmm. You know, so that's basically by nature conservatism because in reality, that coffee machine can be resold, am I? Maybe how the price, you know, or maybe you use two years, there's an ongoing value, am I? Like any other fixed sets. Yeah, there yeah. is a depreciation can be getting into am i a method can be applied my point is that making sense to you in that you know so but you don't he said hey it's only hundred dollar who cares you know yeah so even i'm just talking you know that's my point it's like you not like you purchase a meal <laughs> the next meal you had to be purchased then right so you had to spend more money so that is uh, by nature a, a, deep, a, a extreme example of a conservatism making sense to you you know so mm -hmm. yeah. that being said we're going to wrap it up here next time we're going to continue on the consistency principle is that okay for you so yeah that sounds good okay let's wrap this up okay um do you need a time or you need to want to move on um i'm all right uh, that's You're up right? to you okay so let's move on want to move okay on. let me get a tea however so my throat yeah, go right ahead. Okay. Yeah.
No, sorry for that. No worries. Let me first stop the recording. We can start in this session, okay? So.